Good morning, modern stutters. Nice, chilly, snowy morning this morning. They're calling for anywhere between two and eight inches of snow between today and tomorrow morning. So it's gonna make for an interesting day. Come on in, ladies. Moose, where are you hiding? He must be getting old because Moose hasn't been liking to come out in the weather lately. Oh, silly rooster. Yeah, he's still in New York City. Oh, the boys want to get fed. The boys are like, hey, it's November. It's breeding season. The boys are saying it's November. It's breeding season. It is. Sorry boys, me and Gina were just discussing it. And we're gonna wait till the end of November until breeding season. We wanna wait till the end of November so that way they'll have their babies more towards May because if we have them in the beginning of April, it's still really cold and snowy here and that's not good for the babies. So, but actually it should be a good thing because the girls were all just in heat so they're coming out of their heat cycle. So it's about three weeks is their heat cycle. In about three weeks, it'll be the end of November, so perfect timing, and then we can stick them in with the boys. Leave it in the comments down below. Which goats should we breed to which buck? Good morning, Mr. Figaro. Are we those no. Good morning, sir. I know. Good morning. It's chilly. I know. It's snowing out. You better get ready for it. It's winter. What do you think of the snow, huh? You girls love this weather, don't you? There you go. There you go, Hope. Figaro, I don't think you're gonna like their alfalfa pellets. Nope. You're not gonna care too much for them. I don't know if you can hear that noise in the background. I think you'll be able to. Somebody is logging. I don't know where they're logging, but I can hear logging equipment running. We haven't seen any 18-wheeler trucks around here with logs on them, so, huh. All right, I'm gonna go in the house, have breakfast, get the fire going, and I'm gonna cut over right now to us getting the tracks. So I ordered some tracks for our mule, and we need to go pick them up. It's like you can go skiing on top of Canyon Mountain.
We've got the tracks. So we're gonna have to get the Kubota fired up to get them unloaded. Yeah, I can't manhandle that off there by myself. Well, the weight of those definitely over exceed what the Kubota can do way out front. Let's get them inside. Breakfast was good, thanks for asking. It is getting really windy out here. It'll be interesting to see how much snow we end up getting. All right, now for the part we're all waiting for. Ever since we got our Kawasaki mule last year, I wanted a set of these tracks for it. And I figured this year, with having all the land, we're gonna need to access it to make videos. If we can't get around the property during the winter time, we won't be able to make any videos on it. So we got these tracks right here. I'm gonna open them up, see them. I ordered them super early with everything going on in the world this year. Anytime I'm going to get something, it's taking so much longer. So I made sure we bought these tracks. Now I thought about getting some snow machines, but a snow machine, you're only gonna be able to pull around two people with the tracks for our mule. We can haul six people around, plus whatever we need for video and equipment and for whatever we're gonna be working on the land with. If we need chainsaws, we're gonna have the bed. We can put the bed in it. And if it gets really cold, and it's a really cold winter, there's a possibility we could always add heat to the mule. And then if we need to warm up, we have the mule for that. I think putting tracks on the mule it's going to be a lot more versatile than just having a snow machine. Look at them lugs. That's to keep it on the wheels. I've never installed any of these before. This will be something new. A lot of reading and learning to do before we put these on the mule. I ended up getting the Camso UTV 4S1 tracks for our mule. I figure the Canadians know a thing or two about tracks for side-by-sides, being that they're up north with a lot of snow like we are. These things seem to be built pretty ruggedly. They stand up well. It's the best ones I could find on the market. This is not an endorsed video, we bought these. So we're gonna find out and see how well they are. We're gonna put them to the test. They should say somewhere all right, so top view. So this is a rear track. This is the right rear. So then this one, let's get this one off. We'll see what the difference is between the front and the rear tracks. This must be another rear track is my guess. Rubber tracks themselves are made in the US of A. I like it. All right, so we got them set up like this. We can see them a little bit better. We need to take our tires off and it gets mounted where our tires would go. This is gonna be some kind of a suspension adjustment. These things are gonna make the mule like a tank. 
oh, I can't wait. We're gonna, it's going to be unstoppable. We're going to be able to go anywhere on the property. As long as there aren't trees in our way. We'll be able to open up the trails and start cruising and checking out the whole property. Ah. And yes, this one is the left rear. So these are going to be the front. So the front ones aren't as long. Hmm. We have a level indicator right here on the front ones. Not sure what that's for, but I'm sure the directions will tell us. The other front one has it too, but the rear ones didn't have that. I always look forward to learning new things. And this is so different. I'm actually gonna keep these in here with the heat on for a little while so we get to dry out completely. Oh, man, look at that thing, that's just a beast. Oh yeah, so well built. This has gotta be some kind of mounting hardware. Some mounting, these must be the lug nuts. Yeah, we got our lug nuts here. We have installation guidelines. Yeah, we gotta get into there and see what we're gonna need to do. And then, some more mounting hardware. Cool. Look at those things. This thing's gonna be unstoppable. We got some kind of adjustment, a bracket. It's gonna be our steering linkage. Or for tension, I don't know. We'll figure it out in a minute. So this one is going to be left front. So that's the direction of this one. That's gonna be the front, and that's the rear. So they keep it like this so you can climb up over things. You have more of a angle on it so you can get up over like you get like a tree or a branch or just the snow you can climb better and the back ones they don't have that they're more just straight on boom so some of the things i was reading is you want to keep like a two by four or a two by six with you a short one so if you go over a tree and you don't know it and then it, your front one will climb up over it, but your rear one won't because it doesn't have that angle. But if you take like a two by four or a two by six, you can make a ramp and you can drive over it and get out. So there's quite a bit of a learning curve here for installing it. And then for the, when we're gonna have them on the machine, but oh, this is gonna be fun. I feel like a little kid in a candy store. Man. If you guys have tracks on your side-by-side -side or your four-wheeler, if you ever use them, let me know what I should be watching out for. Leave it in the comments down below. If you've ever installed tracks and there's something I should be looking for, leave it in the comments down below. Totally new here. I'm going to admit it. Something new. Look at those things. These are the front ones. See that angle I was talking about? So you can get up over stuff. Man. All right. So this is our installation guidelines for Kawasaki. So we got our front brackets that were in that box right here. Rear anchor bracket. So front anchor bracket, lift kit. All right, so we're gonna be putting a lift in it and this is gonna get lifted, I think I was told between five and eight inches. But the lift is only for when the tracks are on and when you take the tracks off, the lift comes out. So our brackets we need to mount to our A-arms. See that right there? That's one of the brackets. That'll get mounted to the A-arm. So that's good to know. It says that this will affect your speedometer and your trip meter by up to 35%, depending on the ratio between sprocket and tire size. So that's good to know. Bring the mule down here and we'll give it a look over and see what it's gonna look like.
We also feel like the tracks are going to be a little bit more family friendly because we can all go out on the side by side together. time yet. Oh, it's just the beginning of November. All right, let's see what this thing's gonna look like with some tracks on it. So, they're gonna go like around there. So it's gonna stick out, make it longer. And then on the front, Look so nice and plus it's gonna have a lift kit in it so it's gonna be higher off the ground that's gonna look like a tank <laughs> oh yeah all right so let's get under here and look and see what we're gonna have to undo and do so right here that bolt's gonna come out and our brackets gonna go there that's where our stabilizer link's going to end up moaning. And then we'll take our shock off and add our extension so we can lift it. I don't think it's going to be too bad, but I've never done it before either. <sighs> Leave it in the comments down below. When should I put the tracks on the mule? Should I wait a little while longer or should I just get it ready and stick the tracks on it like in a week or two? Oh, I can't wait to get those on there. They're gonna change the look of that thing. We'll really be able to do some winter exploring on the piece of property we just bought. It's over 500 acres, so there's quite a bit of land to explore. If you guys haven't seen the video of us talking about the new piece of property, I'll put a link to it right here. But man, there's a lot of land to explore and figure out what we're going to do with it all. It feels like the Arctic out here. It is windy and snowy still. You girls all bundled out. <laughs> Watch out. Pluto's going to get you. <sighs> the goats aren't even out. No, they were out earlier and then I left them running behind. It's so windy, I probably haven't, uh, should I say it? I know, right? 45 mile per hour wind gusts today, so they know it's feeding time. How many eggs do you think? Eight? Only four. Two more for them. Some of them are in the molt losing their feathers, so they are definitely not laying eggs. So I'm thinking these ladies are really going to be slow. Laying eggs this winter. Go 
Good thing we got Olivia's. Look at how strong that wind is. It's blowing their feathers all over the place. I was just thinking the same thing. I'm like, when did I bring the mule in here? And I'm like, I didn't. The well, goat's too past. <sighs> That's too funny. That's the way the goats walk to their stall. If you're staying warm, Hope, girls, I'm gonna go get you some more hay. You ate it all. Yeah, he needs some more hay. Your chickens aren't out today. No. The cold air is keeping them in. I guess so. Whoa! Oh, At first I thought that was you grabbing the door. I know, and then it was just so I'm hard like, nope, though. that ain't mom grabbing it. They're over here. Only one out. That's... How many eggs do you think you're going to have today in here? Sure does. Here's all that. He has to get some carrots. Sneak in quick, hey! <laughs> oh, it's nice in here. Hopefully, hopefully these carrots will be ready when we need them. They look a little on the small side, but we'll leave them growing. Because believe it or not, we're halfway through that batch, it looks like. We got a visitor. Have your greens.
Oh, that was a bad thing. That's some nice looking broth you made there. Mm. So I'm just gonna bring this to a boil and then bring it to a simmer and let that simmer for a while before I add my chicken up. This chicken and rice soup is gonna taste so good on this cold day. Hannah wants me. some too. He always wants chicken. delicious and it hit the spot on such a cold night Ugh. I don't know about you guys but I'm pretty excited to have some tracks for the mule it's gonna make it such a game changer for getting around the homestead exploring it figuring out where we're gonna set stuff up and just to bring the camera gear and everything around I can't wait for this journey I know you got a lot of you guys are probably wanting to see more of the property there's nothing really big going on right now. We're waiting for a few things to happen, and then the videos I have in mind will start doing over there. If there's some things you'd like to see right now, leave it in the comments down below. So thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey with us. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead. If you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out, and we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.